Thanks, uh, Sarah, for joining me today. Uh, to kick us off, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, thanks so much for having me here today. I am uh, currently a student at Stanford pursuing an MBA and master's in education um, at the Graduate School of Business and Graduate School of Education. And in addition to my role uh, as director of founder programming for Galvanizer, which I'm excited to talk about today, I'm also uh, the president of GSB's Education Club and in involved with a few other clubs on campus like Women in Management Club. And prior to school, I was a consultant at McKinsey for a few years and worked at Guild Education uh, for a couple years. And I'm originally uh, from Chicago. <laughs> cool. And uh, how did you first learn about Galvanizer? Yeah. So I first learned about Galvanizer uh, last year when I saw their 2022 pitch day. And I was just really immediately drawn to the community, uh, which is you know founded by women and for women aimed at closing the female founder gap. And I've always been really passionate about community building and uh, coming to the GSB, I wanted to find a way to like immerse myself in the startup ecosystem um, in Silicon Valley and such. So when the time came uh, to apply to Galvanizer on the leadership team, it was it was really a no brainer for me. Cool. And uh, before we dive into the actual questions, uh, I want to give the audience just some like background information on Galvanizer. Uh, so from what I could gather from the website, it's student led, it's a nonprofit. You guys run a female founder accelerator for graduate students at Stanford. Mm -hmm. There's no funding attached with the program. Um, the cost this last past cohort was uh, around $200 or $25 per week. Mm -hmm. And you guys rep represent Galvanizer at Stanford, but this organization is also on, I think, 13 other graduate campuses nationwide. Um, is there any other just like background information that you think is important for the audience to know? Uh, that's a really great summary. I guess just a couple other details. Um, Galvanizer was founded by uh, Stanford students in 2020. Um, and our mission is to support female entrepreneurs in their journey to scale uh, companies of consequence. And our main program, like you mentioned, is the Accelerator Program. Um, and we support uh, female founders from MBA programs across the country and, and around the world. And I guess as of this year, we represented 15 MBA programs. Um, and our founders came from over 20 cities in the US and five countries. So we have a really, really dispersed uh, founder footprint as well. Mm -hmm. And there are currently over, I think, 240 alumni as of this latest cohort. And our founders have raised so far over uh, 60 million in seed and pre-seed funding. Cool, that's awesome. Um, and wanted to start the conversation around questions to help uh, female founders considering uh, Galvanizer. Mm -hmm. uh, to start, could you maybe give just a quick overview of like your application process uh, for the Accelerator program? Yeah, um, so our application runs once a year in the late spring. And we target female founders from, like I mentioned, uh, the MBA programs around, around the country predominantly, but also around the world. Um, but every year we do accept a handful of like standout non-traditional applicants, including PhD students or medical or law students, even undergrads and folks who aren't currently in school, just really depends on um, their story and their startup. And during the application process, um, we are mainly looking for a few things in candidates. Um, the first one is just passion, like how enthusiastic are they about starting their venture? Um, you know, how much have they already put into it so far? And then the second thing is background. So this is also like founder market fit. Um, we also look at the quality of their application, like how much how much time and effort did they put into uh, answering all the questions and supplying the supplemental materials that we look for. Um, and then finally, we look at how much time we think they're going to commit to the program and give back to the Galvanizer community. Cool. And uh, the program consists of gal groups, expert office hours, and community connections. Can you just share more details about, I guess, how the program is structured and what topics are covered? Yeah, sure. Um, so the program runs for eight weeks, um, like you mentioned, over the summer. 
And it consists of a weekly gal group, which is basically a mastermind session of five to six founders that meets once the same time every week. And the goal is to help just keep you motivated and moving forward on your venture. And then sprinkled throughout the eight weeks, there are a bunch of expert office hour sessions. We cover everything from you know finding product market fit to um, early go to market and sales strategy, as well as product. Um, Fundraising is a really popular topic for a lot of our founders. So we bring in a bunch of VCs and other experts uh, to speak to our founders there and dive deep into their, their topics of interest and their questions. Um, and then we also have community socials. So those are largely in person in our biggest cities, which are New York and San Francisco. Um, but we also do a couple of different virtual community networking events like coffee chats, um, because it's really important, we believe, for our founders to feel like they're part of a community because as a female founder, the as a founder in general, but especially as a female founder, the journey can feel really, really lonely. And so we want to create some community around that. And then I think the only other thing I'd add is that our eight week program culminates in a demo day. And that's traditionally done virtually, but we have a panel of judges who are all partner, female partner level VCs um, across different range of firms. And they will come in and evaluate the founders. Um, and every year we kind of switch it up a little, but sometimes we have it be a competition where there's money on the line. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, it's a great way for founders to like showcase all the progress they've made over the summer and get to know investors as they're going to seek funding. Cool. And uh, when startups like enter the program, I guess, like what stage are they at? Like, do most have customers, they have a product or where are they at in the process? It's a great question. It's it's a mix. Um, so I'd say about a quarter of uh, the gals in our cohort have already started or successfully raised funding. And so they have a lot of them have customers um, already who are paying for their product. And then I'd say half are still in the like prototyping phase where they uh, don't yet have uh, paying customers for their product. And then a quarter are in the in the earlier days. So think about like folks who have taken a couple of class, startup classes in, in school, but haven't yet like uh, dedicated themselves more fully to their to their venture. Cool. And uh, what does like success look like for you guys? Uh, like by the end of the program, like what do you hope the founders or startups in the in the program accomplish? Yeah. So ultimately, success would be to see like 100% of our alum, uh, you know, continue on with their ventures after um, graduation from from whatever school they're in. Um, but honestly, we just want our founders to feel like they have like the confidence, the tools, and the network um, to to be a female founder, whether that's right now with their current venture or somewhere later down the line. Um, so that is really what we see as our metric of success for the program. Cool. And do you have like a percentage for number of students who graduate that continue on uh, with their startups or? Yeah. Yeah. So over half of our founders um, in historically have continued to work on their startups after graduation. And many of them have told us too, that without Galvanizer, uh, they wouldn't have probably continued on with their ventures after graduation. So we're really, really proud of that stat. That's awesome to hear. And uh, kind of curious, like, what do you see as like the biggest opportunities to just improve uh, how Galvanizer supports uh, founders today. Yeah, um, as a as a leadership team, we we think our biggest opportunity right now is to focus on supporting alum after they graduate from the program and continue on with their ventures. So whether that's with you know continuous programming and helping them fill in any any gaps that they have in their knowledge, or if it's just like getting them connected to Galvanizer alumni or other mentors who are founders or previous founders who could help them with their issues or investors in the area that they're in. I think we there's a big opportunity for us to just continue to play a role after the accelerator program's over. Cool. And uh, now I want to transition towards uh, MBA students who want to join the Galvanizer internal team. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you guys re recruit uh, new internal team members? So we recruit every year in the like late winter, early spring. Okay. 
And uh, how many members is the internal team? I saw on the website, I think like four people, but maybe that's just the leadership team. Is there more people uh, working on this? I wish. Um, there, <laughs> there are only four members <laughs> on the leadership team. Um, yeah, there's, so I'm, I, my role is the director of founder programming, and then there's a director of strategy and ops, uh, partnerships and development and marketing and communications. Cool. So really small team. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm kind of curious about like the other chapters, like how do you guys work with the uh, other chapters? Um, like Alvin yeah. yeah. Like you're talking about at other MBA programs. Yeah. We have contacts and they shift every year, just given the nature of um, grad, grad programs. Um, but we have contacts at all the leading like entrepreneurship and VC clubs at mm -hmm. all the other business schools around the country. So we'll just, we'll, shoot information out to them about our application um, that year and the timeline of the program, and they'll help spread the word on campus. Cool. And then uh, I saw you guys are looking to bring on like advisors and also sponsorships. I uh, would love to hear more about just like how you guys work with both those groups. And uh, the second part of that question is for people who want to get like plugged in to like either as a sponsorship or advisor, like what's the best way to do that? Is it just apply to the website or is it reach out to someone on the team or how do people get plugged in? Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic question. Um, so we look for advisors to mainly support with our expert office hours um, mm -hmm. to help out founders in that way. Um, but we're also always looking to build out our advisor network um, and offer like ongoing mentorship to our founders. Um, so if you wanna get involved as an advisor, um, you just email uh it's it's actually hello at galvanizer.io um that's our official email address um to get in touch with us and we would absolutely love to have you and add you to our advisor network um in terms of sponsorships um we we had sponsors a couple years ago um one of them was svb which you know we all know all know what happened there um <laughs> so we're, we're actively looking for new new sponsors um and most of that would be to help out with our pitch day and offering like a pri prize money for the winner as well as being able to offer any other grants to some of our founders um and so if any corporations or other organizations are are looking for sponsors are inspired by our mission um be the same same email to reach out to us and we'd be super happy uh to to chat with them cool and then uh last question is there like anything i didn't ask about that you think is important to know for either uh, a founder considering joining the accelerator program or that wants to join the internal team i think i think we covered uh most everything um i think in terms of folks who are just like looking to join the galvanizer community like more than anything we're we're just looking for passion and belief in our mission um belief that you know we should fem close the female founder gap um, and that communities like this one are a key key play a key role in doing that um so if if you know as a leader you are mission aligned in that way we'd love to chat with you um and as a founder like I said, we do recruit like non-traditional founders, so you don't have to be at a top MBA program to join our program. So we'd really, really, really love to get to know any founders like that. Cool. And uh, maybe one last thing. Uh, do you have like updated numbers on the, the data for like female founders at BC backed companies or is it still 15 percent or uh, what is it? Like 15, 15 percent of female founders get VC or? Uh, I think on your website it says 15% of VC back firms have at least one female founder. Do you know if that's still like the, the most recent data? Uh, um, that's a great question. I could get you that. I don't know if that's yeah. the most, most recent stat. Um, but I think the key thing to emphasize there is that I, when you originally said that, I was like, that sounds way too high because actually <laughs> only 3% 3, 3 have like a female CEO, which is more yeah. the number that I was actually thinking of in my head. Um, mm -hmm. And so while female founders might be like a co-founder, they're often not the CEO of their business. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of the women who participated in our program um, were, were CEOs, which was which is really, really important to us as well. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, well, thanks, Sarah, uh, for joining me today. Thanks so much, Kieran. Great to chat with you.